Uh, Greg Abbott joins us right now. I think you know the governor now uh, just kicking off his third term. Kind enough to join us. Governor, very good to see you. Thank you, Neil. Great to be with you. You know, Governor, when I first heard this news out of the White House, you know, talking about uh, these encounters going down 97, I said, wow, that, that changed fast. And then I realized, of course, it was limited to these four cases. And I, I, I didn't, you know, put together that it was only those four countries. Now, these are asylum countries and part of that special treatment with Mexico where you know, we're, we'd be going after 30,000 such cases per month. I'm wondering what you make of what the administration is crowing about. Well, a couple of things, Neil. One is, uh, you know, you're a very informed person uh, and were misled by the president. The average American is completely misled uh, by the president, who I think purposefully issued uh, misleading information to make it look to the public uh, like there was some decrease on the border. He's wrong for two reasons, uh, one of which uh, you pointed out, and that is it, they're talking about these four different countries. Americans need to know there are people coming across the border from more than 140 different countries. And so he's, he's admitting uh, a large number of people coming from across the entire world. Second thing, as was reported and is a fact, uh, and that is this time of year is the lowest time of year for border crossings. Uh, and so this is just seasonal. Uh, and uh, if nothing else happens, there will be the natural increase in February and March escalating all through the summertime. But then to add to this, Biden's new border policy is actually going to be attracting even more people to enter into the United States illegally. And so Biden is doing nothing but sowing chaos, which is exactly why Republicans in the United States House of Representatives need to put the pedal to the metal to make sure that they stop any type of program like this by the Biden administration. You know, uh, Governor, you mentioned this period is, is one that tends to be slower. Now, we know already in December, uh, for the total month, there were a record number of encounters, 251,487. Do you then suppose that number, when the January numbers are tallied, in the aggregate will also be smaller? We'll see. Uh, and yeah. again, there, there's so many asterisks involved because, uh, as was reported, which is accurate, and that is there are so many gotaways that are not reported in the official numbers issued by the federal government. How many of these, Governor, are influenced by this deal we have with Mexico to deal with asylum cases to the tune of adjudicating them on their side of the border uh, to the tune of about 30,000 a month? Uh, it might be too early to start digesting this or tabulating this, but what do you think? So it, it is too early. Uh, as that program goes into place, is my analysis and the analysis of others uh, that that is actually going to increase the number of people coming across the border. The reason is because the Biden administration is basically uh, granting parolee status to these people who are coming across the border illegally. And all that will do is to spur even more people to rush the border thinking that they too will get parolee status. But to be clear, what the Biden administration is doing is flat out contrary to federal law. Federal law does not allow this mass parolee process. It requires uh, any president, executive branch, to uh, I issue parole on only a case-by-case -case basis. And so we, the state of Texas, we filed a lawsuit to put a stop to this program by the Biden administration because it is clearly, unequivocally, against the law. You know, um, Governor, if you don't mind my going back to the president's visit at the border uh, and his initial meeting with you, I believe, at the airport, and it strikes me as that was a, a limited meeting. Um, and after that, uh, I think you gave him a letter to explain what was going on. He claimed not to have read it hours later. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, first, to, to be clear, that was the eighth letter that I've sent to the president about the border. I have received no response whatsoever. But to make sure that he knew what was in the letter, uh, you showed on your show and other shows uh, a, a period of time when I was visiting with him there at the El Paso airport. And I wanted to make sure he knew there was one key component of that letter. I have five bullet points in that letter that he can ensure that he uses current law, not new law, but current law uh, to enforce the border to stop illegal immigration from occurring. And I said it's time for you as president of the United States to step up and do 
your job and enforce these laws that already exist to stop the illegal flow of people coming across our border? So it looked like a single page, Governor. Um, so there wasn't much to it. I, I'm not saying not much substantively to it. I didn't mean it like that. But that, that it was a quick read. Anyone could read that quickly. And hours later, we're told that the president still had not. What did you make of that? Right. So we, we purposefully put it on one page uh, to make sure it wasn't a long document that would be long and complicated for him to read. Uh, I, I talked to the first couple of paragraphs uh, about the chaos that he's caused in the country and in Texas uh, and about the ways that he's violated uh, his oath of office in the Constitution. And then I made those five points right. about what he needs to do. And he's just ignoring all of this and federal law and imposing his own will and policies, which are open border policies, allowing these people to come in from more than 140 countries across the globe. As you know, many of your critics, Governor, including those in the White House, said it was a political stunt. What you did with the letter and all was a political stunt. Huh? What do you think of that? So because I had previously sent him seven letters and got no response, I figured I had to be there in person to hand him the eighth letter uh, to try to get a response from him. He did say at the time uh, that he would, you know, try to work with us, but of course we heard nothing from him. And so the only thing that is a stunt uh, is, is what the president is doing to allow people to come into the United States contrary to United States law with no accountability for the president. So um, I, I know you're in a wheelchair, sir, and then you, you've done a very effective job as governor dealing with that and, and now entering your third term. Was there any understanding that because of that, you wouldn't be able to actually tour the border with the president? There are a lot of paved areas where I think that could have been accommodated. Who decided that that meeting at the airport would be it? Uh, the Biden administration, to, to be clear, the Biden administration had announced days before my meeting with him uh, that they were going to El Paso. But it wasn't until late the night before he arrived uh, that they uh, sent an email to a lower level person in my administration that got up to my chief of staff uh, to invite me to meet the president at the tarmac at the airport with no invitation to do anything else with him. Listen, I've, I've been with the, uh, the former president of the United States, President Trump, on the border. Right. Uh, and as governor, I've been on every component of the border. So I can get around on, on rocks, on roads, on dirt, whatever the case may be. Uh, so there was nothing stopping the president from including me with him other than the fact he did not want to detract from his message. Remember this last thing, Neil, and that is El Paso, at the instruction of the Biden administration, completely cleaned up uh, all of the, the migrants who were sleeping uh, on the streets in El Paso to sanitize did it that? so the president would not see anything out of place. Who did so that? it was the Border Patrol. It, oh. it was the Border Patrol who were asked to do that. The president mm. of the United States took Border Patrol off the border okay. to clean up the streets of El Paso. Got it. Real quickly, so your name keeps coming up in a growing list of potential Republican governors who might entertain a White House run. So I thought while I had you here and you were a captive audience, you would answer that one way or the other. Are you going to run for president? Neil, I'm focused on one thing, and that's being governor of the great state of Texas. All right, because the governor of New Hampshire said the same thing, just re-elected governor in the great state of New Hampshire. I, 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 I've heard that out of uh, Governor Kemp in Georgia, re-elected, loves the great state of Georgia. They all kind of have that in common, and then they run. Um, I'm not saying they are. Is it fair to say that you want to and prefer to stay in Texas for these next four years rather than make a White House run? So the only accurate thing to say, Neil, uh, is that my focus is only on leading the great state of Texas. Got it. All right. Well, I tried, didn't I? Uh, Governor, it's always good seeing you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.